What is up, everybody? Welcome to Scene Leaders. I am Moby, and I'm joined today by Andy Skull, cultural curator. Andy, how are you? I'm great. What's up? How are you? I am good. I am good. Welcome to the studio, even though you've done 16 episodes, way more than me, already oh. here. Well, thank you. Uh, definitely, you guys do such a great job here. We've really enjoyed being able to do our podcasts with you guys. It's... I would love to go into kind of your story and your and art and hope and everything else. I'd love to learn. You've been in art and creativity for so long, creating different kind of experiences for multiple organizations all over. How do you see this new trend of digital art and podcasting and more short form video fit into the world of already existing art and creativity? Oh my gosh. Wow. I love this conversation. Um, so the short answer for me is finally. I mean, honestly, when I graduated from UT through the creative sequence as an art director, I mean, I was a digital artist. I worked in Photoshop and Illustrator and everything was digital. Mm -hmm. um, even early artwork that I would make for shows, I made it a point to share that the importance of anything I was making was that it could only have been made now. Mm. You know, that that to me, you know, um, art, culture, there's something specifically beautiful about uh, visual art, mm -hmm. um, audio art now too, but um, being able to say, oh, that's from the 80s. Then, you know, but looking back in time, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's wonderful to see art be a reflection of history and society. And that's part of the joy and the fun. So I was like, we're leaving a bunch of stuff out here, guys. Like how are, how do we get these art forms to people? And so now it's like, all right. You know, it's, um, I remember uh, years ago when a bunch of us started this art movement in Austin called Burn the Box. And we were showcasing um, artists in real estate the last Sunday of each month and it was like a secret thing and um, but I decided to do this one show called the beauty of the process and it was highlighting all um, concept artists and these were video game artists sketch artists is all the stuff that happened before the final product came out but most all of it was digital yeah. and so that was one of the first shows where the show involved all these digital screens and, you know, I, was, I kept trying to think of ways, like, how do we show all this other content and art that's going on? So, so yeah, again, my, my short answer is <laughs> finally. <laughs> I love that. And I think that's reflected in the fact that when you say, and we'll talk about this, Hope Outdoor Gallery, it's, you said it's both an art and technology park. And you're embracing that. Fully. We want to be careful not to make the whole 50 minutes or whatever about NFTs. <laughs> oh, geez. No, that's impossible. I, luckily, I think we've... <laughs> it was kind of like, I don't know, the way it came out, like this popular thing. And I was like, ooh. <laughs> yeah. But it's still very important. Very, mm -hmm. very important. Absolutely. I love to learn how you got even got started in this, like the beginnings of how you got interested in art. Because... When people think of you, or when people think of the most influential creative voices in Austin, you and Hope stands out. But in the beginning, how would you even get started into being like, ooh, this is something I could do as a career? Was this intentional accident, a mix of both? Oh, my gosh. Well, first, thank you. For You're welcome. <laughs> it's true. I mean... <laughs> Still, that's very um, humbling, and I'm very grateful to be acknowledged at all uh, in those ways um, because this city, I feel, is filled with so many incredible, influential creators. Um, uh, but uh, the, the, the question um, in terms of how I got started, I think, is a beautiful story to hear from anyone, right? That the more we um, talk about um, our origin stories, <laughs> Uh, the more relation can happen, you know. So uh, for me as a kid, I really enjoyed, for some reason, literally just uh, 
taking books and going out by myself and uh, redrawing things that I would see. And it started with an Alice in Wonderland book. Um, and I'd say my mom was, you know, very supportive or, or allowed me to just go out in the woods and draw by myself. So we'll just call it supportive. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I think, I think thinking of beginning moments as a child when your brain starts to explore things that you are interested in and then start to feel confident is good to note. And then as I moved along, um, it was a very conscious decision that I had to share with the, my, my immigrant Chinese mom that by 17, I had to research and look up, which I did, like careers that could exist in the creative industries. Because absolutely for her, it was, you're not going to be a doctor or a dentist or a lawyer? Like, which again is, um, is the story of most parents in, in terms of the, the natural way in life is uh, offspring are born and the survival of and how to give them you know, the best you know, survival. And if you come from an immigrant background or first generation, um, it's just a natural thing for, you know, and then I'd say, take that to the Chinese mom level. And it was, I'm sorry, art director? <laughs> like, <laughs> wait, what? You're gonna draw for a living? Yeah, so I did. I remember like literally researching, researching like careers and finally finding this one that was an art director in advertising and explaining, no, I'm going to go to the University of Texas. They have this incredible program called the Creative Sequence. It's the best in the country. I'm going to get in. I'm going to be an art director and I'll still make the same amount of money. Everything will be fine. And she was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> You're not going to be a dentist? I don't. I'm not comprehending. Yep. <laughs> um, no, no, uh, she she was actually very supportive too. I remember us talking about, um, well, you're like, well, if you're going to do that, why don't you just go to culinary school in Europe? And I was like, that's a good idea. Um, so a big part of what I do now is inspired by that. The mm -hmm. whole purpose to me of creating platforms for the creative community um, is to help parents and especially immigrant parents see career opportunities that exist in the arts and, and the creative industries. And I think that we're finally living at a time where it's not only uh, impressive, but where a shift is happening, you know. Um, and I, I still think there's an importance of a balance, you know, that if your kid is athletic or, you know, finding what it is, that we need all these areas together. Um, but yeah, I mean, if your kid, you know, has creative skills, don't hide their drawings under the bed. Like, get them some more influence. 100%. Where would we be without artists of multiple sorts? Literally. I mean, well, every single thing is created, you know? I mean, even, let's say, a, even a basketball player, someone designed the uniforms. I mean everything we do in life involves creativity and um, that's an important part to foster in, in everyone. I agree. I agree and I share um, some of the story of um, the, the idea. My stomach is growling because I haven't had breakfast so I can hear. I hope everybody listening, you, you can't hear, you can't hear but if you do, please eat something for me. Um, my dad wanted me to be a doctor like very strongly like in Pakistan Dude, and have you seen Ronnie Chang's stand up? No. Oh my God. I yeah, have to? I'm going to send it to you. Okay, I would love to. Uh, I was told by my dad at 15, this is so funny. He was like, You have to win not one, but two Nobel Prizes in your life. <laughs> wow. See, you know what I'm saying? There's, there, it is, there is a thing that, you know, parents will want. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I never did that, but, <laughs> but you. you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know, and the stories of how, yeah, it's it's just interesting, and I think it gives breaking away from that mold or from what we think we should do, because I think it's not just immigrant parents or people from different cultures. That time, the whole industry, there was not many successful artists outside of musicians or some very high uh, level artist. The access to the internet to create, to promote your own 
art to an audience, to own that audience through an email list, to have multiple distribution. Yes. It wasn't something that seemed possible or even remotely, it wouldn't exist at that time in people's mind. And now it's so different. Absolutely. I mean, I enjoy also sharing not only with myself and friends, but just in conversations, you know, so much has changed in the past century, you know, within humankind, right? So from our parents and grandparents, it, say even uh, just like, I love bringing up that the music industry didn't exist at all, right? Like there was no, until like records came out, like the way, even though music, audio, art, um, to me, it's actually everything. Um, you know, sound is the first and then it becomes visual, but we didn't have it recorded and accessible in this way until just our current, you know, life of people, you know, and uh, it's fascinating to see how quickly we've evolved, mm -hmm. you know, so these things would be like, oh, it's like it's been forever. It's like a, a blip. In I know. <laughs> so it's, yeah. It's it's all it's all very uh, exciting and meaningful to me right now. Hundred percent, and I think what you just said talks talks through a point of everything is created. I read this stat, and talking about everything is created. Apparently, credit scores did not exist until 1989. I was like, oh yeah, everything is pretty much made up by us. <laughs> right? Yeah, I know. And I'm like, you know, the iPhone came out 2008. <laughs> yes. Hello, people. You know, like, yeah. oh my gosh, I was in Whole Foods yesterday. Have you seen this? No. At the cash register, there was a thing and it was like, hover your palm over this. I'm like, what's that? It's like, pay with your palm. It's already happening. What? Palm? You, the palm of your hand. Wow. Yeah, you're going to be able to register the palm of your hand with your prime code. <laughs> I'm not, this is the real, this is yesterday. <laughs> This, so the you know yeah, uh, yeah. minority report it's minority, all like yeah, yeah, they're just yeah. gonna oh, oh I know yeah have you seen or heard of the con the movie about time I haven't it's what? not a great movie okay but it, it, the concept is everybody has something in the on their arm and it's like the currency is time and how much time you have to live so for example workers go week to week and they get paid for a week. And before they get paid, they get two hours left to live. And but if they have that time, they'll remain 31, 30 forever. And that was interesting. And immediate thought was that. I was like, wow. Well, I, it is it is true. I mean, I always say the most valuable commodities in life are time, trust, and water. <laughs> trust, yes. And water. But time and trust, you just I mean, time you cannot get well. Who knows? You know, <laughs> if that changes, <laughs> yes. I don't know. If Justin, my heart will just explode. I know. If Justin Timberlake can get more time in a movie, I think we might be able to. Who knows? Who knows? Um, hey, I love JT. No, oh my gosh, <laughs> trolls. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember listening to uh, what is it? Bye 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 for the first time, and I just my mind was blown. I was like, this is amazing. This is my favorite song of all time. Wow. Yeah. We just aged ourselves. Right I know. I know. <laughs> For everybody listening who's not, yes. Um, so shifting gears for a second, uh, I'd love to, so you talk kind of about your journey and the importance of creation and how everything is created. One of the most pivotal parts in my life was after moving to America, two, three years in, and I was studying economics and I was not doing well in school there was a summer that I realized that I could create things out of thin air from my mind to something else. And I remember being in class and having an idea. Oh, I'm really good at writing. I've helped my cousins write their college essays. That's illegal or legal. I don't care. Um, and I was like, I'm going to start a business around that, helping people with their college essays, not writing the ghost writing them. Uh, oh, sure. The cat, you already <laughs> spilled the bean. I mean, oh, that's on. fine. Yeah, I never made it into a business. Um, <laughs> But I, I had that idea. I was like, oh, I'm going to do this. It was I had no idea about marketing. I thought I would market by having a plane go over to school and drop flyers. I had no idea about marketing. Wow. I know. Okay. <laughs> but I was like, I have no idea what to do. That summer, I taught myself WordPress. 
and I made a site in 2011, 2012. And the, I, the realization that I had an idea and it exists for other people to see online and I made the whole thing was so powerful to me that I went from economics and switched to tech because this, I never felt that, I wouldn't say power, but that ability to just make things. What was a moment in your life after you got interested in our, after you got interested in this career that you made something and just clicked for you? Like, oh my God, I made this thing. It's so, it was just a pivotal moment in your life. Um, well, at this point, I'm grateful to say that I feel like I've had a few. Yeah. And um, I've also been bringing that up a lot lately that um, basically fuck your five-year plan. Like, really, I ask friends, tell me one person you know that could honestly say that five years ago they could tell you that this is where they thought they were going to be and what was going to happen. And so those pivotal moments when I say I'm grateful to have many, that's the important part, you know, that um, feeling that spark of inspiration is, is, is part of the evolving and growing process that you were meant to enjoy and flourish throughout this timeline of this cycle that you're, that you're experiencing. Mm -hmm. And if you're missing out on that, then you're missing out on the whole thing. That's so, um, so one that was fun, I brought up earlier this art movement that a bunch of friends and I did years ago called Burn the Box. And I'll never forget that moment because it was St. Patrick's Day here in Austin, which, you know, everywhere I'd say in America could be notable. But for whatever reason, I've been here so long that, it, you know, I've always loved St. Patrick's Day in our downtown area. And it was raining and I was on the phone with my, um, <clears throat> uh, at the time, I was part of a, a small, very cool cultural arts magazine that this woman wanted to do, and I was I, I was helping her. Um, and our editor uh, was also my doubles volleyball partners. We were I don't know we were very close friends. So I just remember being on the phone with him, and uh, he, we were talking about the current issue, and I was like, I'm not going to do this anymore. And he was like, What? What do you mean? And at the time, I was, I was a, a graphic artist in film, so I, I worked on film sets. I had worked in advertising. I mean, I, I, I worked for other people. I hadn't really started my own kind of entrepreneurial path. I, mm -hmm. I contracted, but um, so yeah, this moment, I remember him saying, what are you gonna do? And I just had this flash moment of seeing me walking into this mansion party earlier that week, and feeling like, man, it'd be so cool if I could turn this party more into something about my friends instead of um, being invited to this kind of really upscale, nice party uh, because I knew that I, that I was asked if I, if I had any friends that I wanted to bring. And I was like, How? I know I want these people to meet each other. I don't know exactly why. So um, that day on the phone, I told Tony Burns, I'm gonna start this thing called Burn the Box. And it literally just came to me like that. It wasn't, he was like, what? I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna start showcasing artists in real estate. It just, I just remembered that the mansion was for sale and I was like, what if it was an art show? And instead, so, so that ends up being 30 months of my life. We did a burn the box the last Sunday of each month for 30 months and it was a secret art show in a different location and you didn't know where it was unless you were on my email list and Evite had just come out. So I actually shut down Evite in the third month of my art shows. Um, I remember getting that email and Evite was like, uh, this platform was not designed to hold more than 500 emails and by the third month, we had 3,000 emails. Um, so anyway, that's my long story of a, a pivotal mm -hmm. moment where I just remember being like, I can do my own thing. I can, I'm feeling something, a need that's happening, same as you with friends that needed help writing essays. It's like, I have all these friends that make, create, and do beautiful things. And here are my friends that have money and places and events that they need to hire them for. How do I bring them together? 
And so that's when I realized that creating platforms um, was probably more of my, my calling. I love that. Thank you for sharing that story. It, anybody listening to this show will think I'm a broken record, but it's so apt. I remember the quote by Steve Jobs where when you look at the past, the, the dots connect looking at the past. You're like, oh, I can see that from point A, I went to point B because that was my journey. But when you're in that moment, especially in a more creative space and in the chaos of creativity and possibility that could go anywhere, your life could change based on one decision and go in a very different tangent for five years. In that moment, the only thing you can see is just the next step. And the rest, who knows what could happen. But looking back, you're like, oh yeah, that made sense. But in the moment, nope. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, trusting your, your gut and the, the flow is part of the fun and part of the fear and part of living, you know? And it's not to be, it's not, I don't consider it gambling or, but you have to pay attention. And, and, it, and I, I do think it happens more often than people realize, but that's for a reason too, you know? But when, when you're ready and paying attention, like go with your gut, that's where that saying comes from. Yeah, I like that. I would love to hear, so in your more than 20 years um, doing this, what's a challenge in your journey of change and creativity and doing all these things, being a cultural curator, which is a great term, by the way, uh, what's a challenge that you had to overcome in your professional life and how did you do that? I ask to learn more about you and also to share with people who might be going th through something similar or of the same intensity and just hearing somebody that they know about and admire hear about that might be useful to them. Oh, well, um, I, I do think that the more we all share all kinds of experiences and stories, the more helpful everything is um, from motherhood uh, to, you know, uh, college experiences, you know, so Something that I think is helpful for other entrepreneurs was um, when I first realized during um, the, the beginning stages of raising funds for this art park um, that I was just going to have to pull up my bootstraps and to do as much as I could myself. That the, another friend really encouraged me by saying, you're already doing it. You know, that... I kept trying to find the right VC group or the right, you know, that I felt they could like, I'm, I kept, I kept putting myself in a little area of, you know, here are the things I'm good at and I need someone else. And then as soon as my friend was like, yeah, but you're already doing the things that you're trying to find someone that's good at these things, but in the process, you're actually already doing it. Does that make sense? Where, um, so I guess similar to you when you then said you went and learned WordPress or da da da. I mean, essentially, once your your mind sees the vision, your you your words start to become reality. You're already in process. So it was more just kind of letting go that as I um, just kept moving forward and talking with people, I would I would continue to find those that would be the right fit. But instead, I was kind of sitting there and be like, no, I'm going to find someone that's going to, I'm going to offer them a percent and they will raise all the money for me. And they, you know, but meanwhile, people were like, Hey, can, can I invest? My, can I get involved? You know? And I was like, Oh yeah, sure. Oh yeah, sure. And my friend's like, you realize you're already like, maybe you don't even need a VC for, I was like, Oh, I don't. But that was for my project. So, um, anyway, I feel like that's some entrepreneurial advice to, um, just let your self and vision start start to happen and unfold and don't contain yourself. I think that's uh, extremely useful and tactical because it also speaks to how when you're starting out, you're kind of the face of the company and you're talking to people and you're started and it's not easy building something. 
at all, especially if you're raising money, if you have different kind of um, things you're doing in it. When you share your message, that's 100% passion that's coming through to those people. And there's a higher likelihood they will buy in. Um, we do get into this thing of if only I had a specialist helping with this, I would be so successful. But the more people we hire, this isn't always true, but it works, which is the passion gets diluted a little bit. Yes, and yes. That's so true. Um, and then I just realized another part to that. Um, we really have so many more skill sets and and senses and what I just call superpowers then we give ourselves credit for not only as individuals but as as a society mm -hmm. you know so what we then start defining in our own mind as like oh I can only do this um, I feel like sharing with other creatives and entrepreneurs like you actually have no idea how much you can do so for me that happened after having my first child and that just was an easy way for me to explain like watching my body literally grow another human being and then start producing all kinds of fluids and things that I was like, it just unlocked these like superpowers. Mm -hmm. But I was like, oh, actually this is how like we all are. There's so much more capacity that we just, we, we've limited ourselves to like the five senses and the, just these things that again, were only designed or came up just a few decades ago, right? But what if you were like, no, we actually have eight senses, 12 senses, you know, then you would be like, oh, shoot, then I'm actually underperforming, right? No, like, yes. like, I'm barely doing anything. Like, I'm going to step it up, like, figure out these other things. And then you realize, you're like, oh, my gosh, I can, I can actually do, I can do anything I want. That's, and that's the place to get to. And, and that also, you don't have to, you know, that, um, all this to me helps you learn like your space of contentment and then within that whatever vision you have that you want to create comes out of joy and sharing and wanting to help or you know it's it's it helps uh release the ego there's there's just so much that starts to happen by being like wait a minute <laughs> i can i can do more mm -hmm. like yeah yeah you totally you totally can fly <laughs> Um, it, what you just said like two minutes ago about life, it made me uh, think of the statement, life is the ultimate creation, because and it ties into our conversation about creating things, but uh, you sharing your journey of motherhood, and you're like, oh yeah, life is the ultimate creation. I, I'm not, I mean, I definitely enjoyed growing two human beings. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I did tell my brother as soon as I had my first daughter, if there was a gift I could wrap up and give him, it would be that. I'm like, yeah. man, being a man sucks. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you can't do that. Yeah, you just can't yeah. do it. Um, but uh, yeah, but, it, but again, I think going back to ideas and visions and creations, it, it is a, a similar process. And I have found with other artists or creatives, sometimes when we talk, I'm like, oh, you're in the chrysalis. They're like, what? I'm like, well, you're... You're in a whole new, like, you're about to become a butterfly. Like, and a part of growth and incubation and birth is that it's hard. It's a struggle. And it's painful. Like, birth is painful. And it's, it's so, so sometimes right when it's the most painful, I'm like, oh, you're about to have twins. Like, you ever, are you ready? Are you ready? And they're like, what? I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, there's. <laughs> You've been growing and building something like something mm -hmm. big's about to happen. So, um, it's a great perspective to understand. Um, not to you know to be unrealistic, but most of the time it's pretty true. Yeah, I would love to see someone's face when they're talking about a creative endeavor, and you say that, which is you're about to have twins. Then be like, what? Wait, what? I'd love to be in that conversation. I know you got two companies coming out. Are you ready? <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, towards the tail end of this conversation, there's a lot of great creators who've been in Austin decades, years, weeks, some of them days. Um, 
what is one if you had a chance to share one message with them with all the creatives of very different types i know there's so many there's so many what is one lesson you would share with them or one thing you would teach them oh um boy well laughter and levity are really my kind of main mantras uh especially since covid so it would be something along those lines to not take yourself too seriously and really through laughter and levity you can really see how you you can contribute participate be involved um yeah don't miss out on the fun it's true that is true it reminds me even if it's hard you still try to make it funny that's why people have gallows humor that's right you still gotta do it that is gonna make it a little bit better yeah absolutely to me that's very much living in the moment that is very true andy thank you so much for joining us today oh my pleasure thank you